Good morning, everyone. Once again, person. Good morning, Andre. Welcome. Um, welcome to those of you joining online, wherever you are and wherever you're listening from. Um, just say welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. For those of you joining for the first time, my name is Chris Suka, and I have the blessing of giving you the word this morning. So we welcome you to new creation. Um, cannot pray too much. So I invite you wherever you are just to, to bow your heads with me and we'll just pray that the Lord will lead us in his word. Um, so Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, that you have given us a more sure word of prophecy, the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for, for each one joining us this day. Lord, we just pray in Jesus' name that your Holy Spirit would anoint each one. The Holy Spirit, you'd anoint our ears. Give us ears to hear what you are saying to the churches. The Holy Spirit, you'd anoint our mind. Give us a mind to understand what you are saying. And most of all, anoint our hearts that we would be transformed by your word and be living epistles of your grace and your glory here in the earth. And Holy Spirit, finally, please give me the ability to speak the word as I ought. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, if you've been listening for a while, you've probably heard a whole lot of dust and slime. <laughs> but this morning, uh, I'm not going to speak on that. Some of you might breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> so much. Um, let's see if I can set this in a way where it won't fall off. Um, last time, I spoke a little bit on how... Um, okay, I will have to speak a little bit on it, but not very much, I promise. Um, last time, how slime holds the bricks of Satan's kingdom together. And slime is a picture of fear. Fear is how Satan's kingdom operates. Satan's kingdom is rooted in fear. You do what I say or else, and so the bricks don't move. They're trapped in fear. And, and uh, everything in Satan's kingdom, which is really all the kingdoms of, of the world have been pretty much handed over to him, um, fear is, is the operating system. Everything runs through fear. You do what I say or else. We'll, either, we'll take away your life, we'll take away your reputation, we'll take away your job, we'll take away something that is precious to you. We'll hurt you. So you do what I say or else. And you want to find out what the what else is. Um, now, we might say, well, wait a minute. Scripture says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. After all, he made it. But when man sinned, see, man was given the dominion over the earth. Genesis 1.26 says, Let us make man in our own image and likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the creatures that move upon the face of the ground, and everything, let them have the dominion over the earth. 27 says, and God, so God made man, in the image of God, did God make man, male and female, made he them. And he blessed them and gave us, our ancestors, the dominion over all things in the earth. Okay? Which meant that we could uh, operate in, in dominion as long as we were in relationship with the, with the one who made everything. The only way you could exercise dominion properly is to be in a relationship with the Creator, with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That is the only way you could um, exercise properly the dominion. Which was great for a period of time, which the, the Bible doesn't tell us. We don't know how much time passed between Genesis 1 and Genesis 3. For a short time, or a long time, it went really well, uh, right up until the serpent came into the garden and told Eve, and Adam was there, you need to become like God. 
God's keeping something from you. If you eat that fruit, you will become like God. You'll know the difference between good and evil. I'm, I'm giving you the short, short, short version. Um, of course, all of that was a lie because God had already made us in His own image. You're already like God. You don't need to become like God. You're already like God. You're His idea. He made us. We didn't need to do anything to become like Him. We're already we're like Him. The only thing we needed to do is believe it. That's it. And we didn't believe it. We believed we needed to become like God. So we ate of the fruit. Now, in Genesis chapter 2, I have to backtrack a little bit, uh, it ends with, and I've always thought that, that this is kind of a weird way to end a chapter. If you look at Genesis 2, the very last verse it says, and they were naked and they were not ashamed. Think, well, that's a bit of an odd way to end a chapter, talking about their lack of clothing or their clothing choices is a weird way to end um, a chapter, but it's really important. Um, it's important not because of what they were not wearing, but because they were not afraid. They were not afraid of each other. They were not afraid to be with God. Because I'm speaking on fear this morning. The message is called Fear Factor. Um, they were not afraid. They were not afraid of each other. They were not afraid to be in the presence of God. They, they were not afraid to be completely exposed the way the good Lord made them with each other. And, and their bodies became a picture of their inner self that they were not afraid to be, to know and to be known by God and by each other. Okay? And that's very important. That was the condition. They were happy. They were completely happy and completely open with each other. Now, after sin... It says, they realized they were naked, and they tried to make fig leaves for themselves and ran and hid in the bushes when they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the fig leaves are a terrible way to try to cover yourselves. I mean, just, you know, don't imagine it too much, but, you know, it's just, try to imagine living in, in Canada. That, that's where we are, uh, for some of you who are joining us from, from other countries. And, you know, for a good part of the year in Canada, there are no leaves. That to be found, and it's just not effective um, to try to cover up in them, <laughs> there aren't any, um, nasty. It wasn't effective, and, and so because it wasn't effective, they ran and hid in the bushes. Now they were ashamed of each other, and they were afraid when they heard the sound of God walking. Now I don't want you to become confused, uh, because some some might say, well, what about the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord is a good thing. This is not fear of the Lord. This is fear against the Lord. It, it, it's, it's a running in terror away from God. See, the fear of the Lord is a good thing. And it draws you to God. But the fear against God is a very bad thing, and it pushes you away from God. They didn't come to God and say, God, Father, Papa, Daddy, Abba, whatever they, Lord God, whatever they called him, we've sinned against you. We ate what you told us not to. And I know now we have to die. We don't even know what that is. Nothing had ever died yet. But they didn't do that. They hid instead. And, you know, hiding from God never works. You know, it, it, it's a bit like um, some of you have been parents and you've seen your kids, and, you know, they've got something behind their back, and you say, what is that behind your back? Nothing. <laughs> how, how many of you have had kids that have done that? <laughs> said, nothing. Come on, no. <laughs> you know, we know there's something behind your back. Hiding things from God or hiding ourselves from God is a bit like doing that. God knows already. But that's where fear and fear against God, not the fear of the Lord. Please don't get mixed up with the fear of the Lord. That's a whole different thing. Fear against God, but fear in general entered the world. There was no fear before there was sin. But when sin came, fear came with it. Fear um, is, is attached to sin, and sin carries the penalty of death. 
So fear of death came with sin. Everything became afraid. And Satan's kingdom was built on that fear of death because Satan is, is the accuser. In fact, uh, Satan is not a, a, a name. We often use it as a name. Uh, but it, it, it's not a name, it's a title. In, in Hebrew, it's Hasatan, which means the accuser, the, the, the adversary. He's the one always, you know, if you, if you were in a court of law, the prosecuting attor attorney would be called the Hasatan. Some of you would, I apologize to anybody who's practicing law, but we might think, well, that explains so much. But um, that it, it means the, the adversary. Okay, and the, the adversary, he's against us. He never liked this. He hates us with a passion. And so he instills fear because he accuses of sin. You're guilty. You're going to die. You deserve to die. You should have seen what that guy did. You should have seen what Chris did. You should have heard what he said. You should have saw what he looked at. You, you, you should have thought, you should, oh man, it's a good thing you couldn't see what he was thinking. Those are the kinds of things Satan goes about doing. Of course, Satan can actually know what I'm thinking, but he still is good at accusing people with it. He owns fear. Fear is his property. He owns this life. Um, and so all of creation is kind of subject to fear. And fear just kind of grew. It had a growing effect on everything. Everything became afraid. Something, someone, everything. When I was praying uh, and, and spending some time in fasting and prayer early this year, the Lord spoke to me and, and, and said, this is a season of magor misabib. And since that's not a word used in most people's vocabulary, I asked, Lord, what does that even mean? It comes from Jeremiah 20, verse 3, which I didn't know at that time. It took me a bit to find it. Um, it means fear on every side. Fear on every side. There shall be fear on every side. See, in Jeremiah's day, just the context of it, Jeremiah was prophesying to the kingdom of Judah, saying, Jerusalem will fall to the Babylonians. So it would be really good if you repented of your sin, turned away from the idols, because God is using Nebuchadnezzar to bring you to repentance. So repent of your evil, surrender to the Babylonians, and it will be good for you, but keep going in your sin, and it's going to be really bad for you. But that was a really unpopular message. Nobody liked that. In fact, it was seen as national treason to surrender to the Babylonians. I mean, they're the enemy. Don't we need to be encouraged while we fight the enemy? Jeremiah was saying, no, you need to repent before the Lord. And there were a lot of people prophesying the opposite, prophesying, we're going to win. There's going to be victory. God's going to give us victory. <laughs> Nobody was listening to Jeremiah, because who likes that message? Um, so one of the priests, whose name is Pashur, struck him on the face and, and accused him of, of lying. Jeremiah said, your name will no longer be Pashur, but Magor Misabib, meaning fear on every side, because you're going to live to see the very thing I've been speaking. You're going to get carried away to Babylon, and you're going to die there, in captivity. And it won't be nice for you, because you've been prophesying lies. In fact, all of your friends you've been prophesying lies too, they'll go with you into captivity. And you'll experience the terror on every side of a city under siege. Very serious stuff. Um, so I was asking the Lord, well, we're, we have, have been in a season of fear on every side. There's been fear in every way, that, in every place there can possibly be fear. If you t t open a newspaper, open your, your, your television, go on the internet, spend any time on social media, Look at anything that, that's not directly in, in your own home, there's fear. There's fear of anything and everything. Um, there's fear of a disease. Now, I want you to understand that, um, okay, it, it's not that the fear is not justified. There's things to be afraid of. But like, they cause fear. They, they're fearsome things. Well, you know, like I said, Satan uses the power of fear, fear of death. They're going to 
kill you, we're going to kill your reputation, we're going to kill your job, we're going to kill your career. All of those things are, are things that cause us fear. It's, it's not to say well, you shouldn't be afraid. No, they, they're there, they cause us fear. Uh, and we've been in a season of fear on every side. There's fear about the disease. I'm going to die from the disease. And there are people who are dying from the disease. That's the reality. There's other people saying, well, I'm going to die from the, 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 the uh, measures taken to counteract the disease. And there are people dying from the measures taken to counteract the disease. There's people dying from COVID. There's people dying from suicide. There's people dying from opioid overdoses. Alcohol has gone up, gone through the roof. Suicide, all of that stuff. Because the disease is, is causing death and, and, and the countermeasures are causing death. And, and, and then, so, to, because we're afraid, that then we invented, and I'm not anti-vaccine, but we invent lots of vaccines, and there are lots of people who are afraid of the vaccines, and it's understandable, too, because there are side effects, and, and, and people have died from the side effects. I mean, it's not a lot of people, but it doesn't matter if it's anybody. You all, all get me. There's lots of things to be afraid of. And there's a lot of voices right now speaking into our ears saying, you should be afraid of this. Do you see this? This is scary. Let me show you just how scary this is. If you open your social media or news or what, I don't, and I don't care what even source it is, there's fear. There's so much fear of everything and anything. There's fear everywhere. You know, the, 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 those who don't know Christ are saying, you should be afraid of this. Oh my goodness, that, whoa, whoa. I don't like looking at that, oh my goodness. Those who know Christ are saying, you should be afraid of this, whoa. <laughs> don't like that either. Did you see what's behind you? hide. <laughs> I'm going to hide. I'm going to find some place to hide. Because there's fear over there, and there's fear over there, and there's fear over there, and I'm not even looking over there. Because there's probably something that will scare me there too. Um, you know, we can feel a little bit like the cowardly lion from the Wizard of Oz right now. Maybe justifiably. Everything scares me. But there's fear all around. There's lots of things to be afraid of. And again, it's not to say that those things are not justifiably fearsome. They, they cause fear. There's, you know, it's not wrong to be afraid of them. However, this is the however part. The Bible has a whole lot to say about fear. 366 times in the Bible it says, fear not. Mm -hmm. I went through the concordance, and it's a lot. And, 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 and I didn't write them all out. I I'll want to one day. But there's a lot of verses about, not, about fear. Don't fear. Don't fear. Fear God, but don't fear other things. So 366 times, do not fear. Even a leap year, yeah, thank you. Even in a leap year, you know, when there's an extra day, you know, one for every day of the year, don't be afraid. Fear not. Um, you know, David prayed in Psalm 64, verse 1, Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. See, <laughs> okay, this is ironic, but the thing can get you, whatever it is you're afraid of, let's say there's a bear, you know, we're in Canada, we have bears, you know, or, or a lion or something, that can get you. But you know the fear can get you before the thing will even get you? Fear can give you a heart attack. You know, it'll be like, no, no, it's okay, I'll beat you to the punch. I'll get myself before you get me. The fear itself can kill you. Your body has a certain response that comes into effect the moment 
it, it, you become afraid. It, it, it sends a whole bunch of hormones racing through your body so that you can respond by either fight or flight. You can either fight it or run away. You know, to try to preserve your life. But that's a horrible way to live. It'll shorten your lifespan. You know, I, I worked with, with birds. Birds will die if they're afraid for too long. It, it'll kill them before anything else can get a hold of them. They'll, they'll, they'll die of heart attacks. You know, some birds getting chased by, by falcons, which are really fast, uh, fast flying uh, birds that eat other birds. And, and, and when the falcon is chasing them, pigeons sometimes, pigeons are their favorite food, will sometimes have a heart attack before the falcon can get to them. Because they're so afraid that they're going to die, they die. They might have gotten away, but they died before they could even get away because they're so afraid. It's interesting that, that David doesn't say, uh, protect me from the enemy, which it was a good prayer. I mean, we pray that in Lord's Prayer. Keep, keep us from the evil one. Keep us from evil. But he says, keep me from the fear of the enemy, because the fear of the enemy is going to get to me before the enemy does. And, and there are things to be afraid of. I mean, David was likely hiding in a cave because Saul was going about trying to kill him with big spears, sharp swords, and big strong guys who, who would have ripped him to pieces. But fear could have gotten to David before even Saul could. He prayed, keep me from the fear of the enemy. In Isaiah 8, 12, this is a loaded scripture, and I'm probably going to manage to offend absolutely everybody today, so I, I beg uh, your forgiveness, because everyone's probably going to get upset, but we're all going to be equal right now. Everyone's going to be upset, right across the board. Um, Isaiah eight twelve says, Say ye not a conspiracy to them, to all them, to whom this people shall say a conspiracy. Or a, in the Old King James it says confederacy, but the word is properly translated conspiracy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Oh boy, yeah. Yep, that was it right there. Um, <laughs> it happened. Don't call it conspiracy what they're calling. I mean, again, this was written at a time when there were lots of conspiracies going on. I mean, Assyria was coming from one direction. Egypt was coming from another direction. Right in, and, and you know, there was the children of Israel right in the middle. Just like when you look at a map of the Middle East now, there's a little tiny sliver called Israel, and then around it is giant Egypt, which has like five times the population, almost six times the population of Israel, just by itself. Jordan is massive compared to it. Syria, all of those guys, and then there's little tiny Israel. And, and they were all plotting over who could overrun poor little Israel right in the middle. And so there were lots of confederacies or conspiracies going on to try to avert all of these rather large armies that were threatening Israel. And in the midst of all of this, because Ahaz, this is Isaiah chapter 8, and in chapter 7, King Ahaz had just gone to Isaiah saying, you know, what should we do? All that kind of stuff. Um, and Isaiah says, don't fear their fear. Don't fear all the conspiracies that are going on. It's not to even deny that there are conspiracies. But that should not be your fear. We can all be afraid by this because the more you see, you know, the, the, the lights are, are open and people are saying, did you see about this? This is really scary. You hear about what they're wanting to do? This is scary. You should be afraid. If you're not afraid, we're going to check your pulse. This, you should be afraid right now. And, and we look at it and go, oh, oh, that would be scary. And then somebody else is saying, well, did you see about this? Don't, don't, don't. That, that, that's child's play. That's nothing. That, that, that's, you should be afraid of this. This is terrifying right here. Oh my goodness, I've got the heebie-jeebies right now. You should be afraid of all of this. <laughs> and in the midst of this, the Holy Spirit says, don't fear. Don't fear. Don't call a conspiracy what everybody around you is calling conspiracy. And again, this is not to condemn anybody. I'm not here to condemn anybody. You know, whether you're looking at this thing and you're afraid, you're looking at that thing and you're afraid, I'm not even going to pretend to look behind me because I don't want to know what's back there. 
Um, or what's ahead. Pardon me. But in the midst of this, the Holy Spirit through the prophet Isaiah is saying, Say ye not a conspiracy to all them to whom this people shall say a conspiracy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Now even though that was written 2,700 years ago, I think it's very applicable to 2021. David, the same guy, the sweet psalmist of Israel who wrote Psalm 64, verse 1, saying, Hear my voice, O Lord, in my prayer, preserve my life from fear of the enemy, would write also Psalm 27, verse 1. Same author. Who said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And again, he wrote this, probably hiding in a cave, knowing that Saul was out there with them, still with those big sticks and the big spears and the big swords and the sharp objects and big blunt objects and other things that were all intended to destroy him. But David said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? If I am knowing God is my light, my salvation, what am I doing? Yeah, that's naturally scary. So is that. So is that. But the Lord is my light and my salvation. Why am I afraid? Why should I be afraid? The Lord is the strength of my life. Wow! Just... Take that in from what the Lord is the strength of your life. If you know Him, you're not limited by whatever strength you have. You're not limited but by you know, our own rather limited finite strength, intelligence, whatever, courage. He's your strength. He is your rock and your refuge. You, you, don't, you don't have to just rely on, on whatever muscles you might have or whatever intelligence you might have or whatever wisdom you might have to face all these scary things that are ganging up on you from every side. He is your strength. The one who made all things is your strength. The one who overcomes all things is your strength. Now, the fear of the world, the worldly type fear, is, is a spirit. Um, it's a spiritual being that desires to hold everybody captive in fear. Because it points to that thing over there, and that thing over there, and that thing back there, and that thing way over there. And it says, you should be afraid of all of this. You should be quivering and hiding under your bed. Or at least under the blankets on top of the head if you can't get out. You should be afraid. You should be in bondage. Or else. The Apostle Paul, in writing of, uh, of us who have experienced Christ, the one who is our strength and our salvation, in Romans 8.15 he says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We have not received that spirit that says, look over there, and look over there, and look back, back there, and, and look there. That spirit that cries out, look here. The fear, the fearsome things, magor bisabib, fear on every side, might be on every side. But who is in you? You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption. The spirit that, that cries within you, Abba, Father, Dad, you are adopted. God Most High is your Father. Jesus, King of all kings, Lord of all lords, has become your elder brother. The Holy Spirit is in you, pointing out this is who you are. You don't need to be afraid. Again, in writing to Timothy, in 2 Timothy 1.7, the Apostle Paul says, For God has not given us 
the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We're not held in bondage. See, when you're in fear, you don't have a sound mind. Your mind is only thinking one of two things. Run away or fight. That's it. Decision-making is gone out the window unless the decision is running that away as fast as you possibly can. Or, or hiding. That's about it. You can't make decisions. It handicaps us. It keeps us in bondage. But we've not received the spirit of fear. But a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Why of power? Because God is your strength. The one who creates all things, who holds all things, by him, through him, all things consist. He's got you. He who is and has all power has got you. And you've got him. Which means that you have all power. All power. And of love. And love casts out all fear. In, in 1 John 4.18 it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. You know, fear and, and, and love are mortal enemies. They can't be together. One will kick out the other one. If you have love, you won't be in fear. You know, people... Oh, like when you read an act of stoning of, of Stephen, he's dying. I mean, the world's the slime is as slimy as it gets. There are blunt, big rocks pummeling him and killing him. And instead he says, Father, do not hold this to their charge. And he sees the heavens open and the Son of God seated at the right hand of the Father. Because he loves those who are killing him. I mean, the fear is kind of on the outside looks like it's winning. Because that's what the fear says. If this thing gets a hold of you, you'll die. Oh my goodness. That thing gets a hold of you, you'll die. Uh oh. That thing gets a hold of you, you'll die. I haven't even discussed that thing yet. But, if we know the love of God, the one who loved us so much that he tasted of the very worst that the fear and the slime could dish out, which was death, and death on the cross. He tasted of the very worst, the thickest and worst of the fear and the slime and, and everything of, of, of Satan's fury and hatred poured out as he surrendered himself to die on a cross and rose again. Because he lives, we live. And because he lives and we live, death has no more hold. That, that the very thing that causes those things to, to, to come against us and say, if, you know, that thing saying, if I get you, you're going to die. That thing saying, if I get you, you're going to die. That thing saying the same thing. And we can be, Christ has died, he lives forevermore. Because he lives, I live. So you have no more power over me. What could you do to me? To live as Christ, to die is gain. Either way, I win and you lose. To the fear. We don't have to be afraid. Psalm 91. I'm going to read verses 1 to 6. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. That's a disease. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence, that's a disease again, that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Amen. If we know Christ, we need not be afraid. 
We need not say, call everything a conspiracy that they call a conspiracy, even if there is a conspiracy. Even if there is a plot and a plan and a ploy and death and destruction and, and all that kind of stuff. But if we know Christ, we need not be afraid. We need not be afraid. Because the love of God has been poured out in us, the same love that overcomes fear. That overcomes all the power of fear. Fear is said to be an acronym, false evidence appearing real. But it is false. All of these things, are lying and saying they can kill you. Well, maybe they can. But death has lost its thing. The grave has lost its power. Because Christ lives, so do we. So in this season, there are a whole lot of people being held captive by fear. And we, who know the love of God and Christ Jesus, you're not held by fear. You have not received the spirit of fear. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. Praise the Lord. Don't walk in fear. And you can stand firm, even against the lions and the bears and whatever else is standing up to cause everyone else to be afraid. You can stand. Let's just close in a word of prayer. I commend our fears to the Lord while you pray. Just quietly before the Lord. Just, because we don't need to be afraid. We're, we're in a season where there's so much fear. But the Lord has overcome all fear for us. So Father God, we just come before you right now in Jesus' name. Father, thank you that in great love you sent Jesus, that you were in him, and that, Lord, you have overcome death and hell, everything that could cause us to be afraid. Lord, let us not fear the enemy. Lord, let us not walk in that fear. Because, Lord, you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound. We receive it in Jesus' name. We believe it, Lord. Help us to stand fearless, Lord. To love fearlessly. To show your love to others around us, Lord. To say, you don't need to be afraid. You don't need to walk in fear. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this indescribable gift. Bless each one, Lord. Strengthen each one through all the things whatever we might be going through, Lord. That we would keep our eyes fixed on you. That we would not succumb to the fear. That, Lord, we would walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. And cause his face to shine upon you.